Hello and welcome. This is Shane from KLIT, your e-library and e-learning specialist in Papua New Guinea. For today's um, session, we are going to get a course. And this course is going to be a module and we want students to register in this course. So for example, um, I have here is a grade 7 code folder and as you can see it's a PDF document which contain the full resources for grade 7 students, maths strand one but what we want to do is we we want to create a we want to create a lesson for students to log in as individual students to access this course so what we did is we create a e-learning course which is this as you can see it is an interactive e-learning course now with this interactive e-learning course it contains text slides pictures even attached resources such as pdfs you can include videos students can access that but in order to make this available we we have to put it in a system which which can be available to students so for example i have this e-learning content here previously it was just a plain old a document like this and but now we created a interactive e-learning course with lessons activities so on so i have this module here and now what what i'm going to do is I want to register two of my students so as you can see in this photo I have two of my students as an example Gabby and Sarah now this is just a demonstration purposes so I want these two students to access these resources here at the same time I want the system to grade themselves they sit for the class they do the quiz and the system that grades themselves so Here's just a demonstration. So one thing cool about the e-learning is that we are able to build your e-learning school. So here's a simple demonstration. So for example, I'll just log in to the server, which is localhost. Now, this is basically a platform which act as a school, a school management system. So what it does is that um, you register your grades and then inside of each grade you you create subjects and inside of those subjects you assign activities which you want your students to do these activities but before they do these activities they they must have an account so for example i'm just going to log in as an uh, administrator because i'm the admin of this um platform once when i log in as an uh, administrator i want to make this course available to two of my students so gabby and sarah so this is the course here this is the module this file here i want them to access it so in order for them to access this this uh, e-learning material i have to edit in this platform so i come in i go back to my dashboard that's the e-learning platform as you can see it's the png e-learning school okay what i do is i will have to go to my site home and then i'll come to the grades so I'll just go into grades because uh, Gabby and Sarah are registered underneath grade 7 and because it is a grade 7 uh, mathematics material book so I'll just go underneath grade 7 and I'll just I'll just edit to under grade 7 mathematics resources so I'll just click this and then I will have to enable the edit settings so I'll just click edit settings correction here uh, that's the wrong tab not edit settings but I will have to click uh, turn on editing so once when it's 10 on, you can see these features are popping up at the um, right hand corner you can see add resources so for example um i'll just do example for this topic one so i'll just scroll up here i'll just come to this document again so as you can see i'll just come and i'll just say uh substrate one fraction i'll just highlight this i'll just copy it and i'll just paste it in the e-learning um uh, the school management platform so it's a substrand and then i'll just hit enter so i have my uh, topic already now i want to add the activities now as you can see there's no activities it's all blank so here is the here is the uh, activity that i want but i don't want to add this pdf file i want to add this e-learning file which has already been built by klit which i want to edit in my course for gabby and sarah to access so what i do is i I zip put this file into a zip folder as you can see it's in zip it's in a zip format as you can see this then I'll go back to the platform which is the 
PNG e-learning school. So what I do is I just click the add and activity resources. So I'll just select that and then I'll scroll down to this and I'll select scrum package because this is a scrum package and then I'll just select add. Once when I select add, I have to type in the title or the name of this package. So I'll just go back to my uh, back and I'll just highlight this. I'll just copy this name here. It's a greater match strain one. I'll just come back to here and I'll just insert the name and I'll just type, type a note like um, please do this X exercise and activities that's all now once when it's done I'll just uh, I will have to click this add so I will have to navigate where that package is located so as you can see this package is uh, like I'll just go back it's located in my uh, desktop in my um, grade 7 fold so I'll just locate that so I'll just click this attachment I'll just click choose file then I'll just go to my desktop and then I'll come down to the grade 7 fold and then they have it the zip file so I'll just select that and I'll, I'll just click open and then as you can see it's, it's already attached now all I have to do is just click the upload file button so I'll just click upload now it's already upload and then the last thing I will have to do is I will have to click save and return back to course because since when I upload the file, I will have to enroll the students to participate in this activity. So I'll just click save and return. Just give it time for load. Now, as you can see, it's already attached. Grade 7, um, grade seven mathematics activity. As you can see, it's already here. So all I have to do is I want... Um, my students to register so i have gabriel here as you can see let's go back uh, i have these two students i have the id photo gabby and sarah so all i have to do is i want them to access my activities and my lesson so i will have to register them in order to access grade 7 since they are grade 7 students as an uh, a, uh, example a demonstration so i will click i will just go back scroll down to the site administration and then i will have to manually register this two students because they're not registered so it's like when they pay their school fee you know that the school fee has already been paid so now we can register the name so i'll just type gabby it has to be in lowercase then i'll scroll down his first name is gabby gabriel and then the surname is uh, nimile and then the email is g nimile at gmail.com now that's then the town is in uh, Lay, and then country is in uh, Papua New Guinea. I'll just scroll down, locate where is Papua New Guinea. Okay, there it is, Papua New Guinea. Then um, I'll just add a uh, picture profile. So every time when my students log in, they, they have the profile. And later on, they can log in in the account and change the profile. So I'll just click add, and then I'll just browse the location where the, the ID photo is located. It's in my desktop. It's in the students and they have it. Let's get this photo. I'll select OK. Let's click upload. Once when it's upload, I'll just scroll up and uh, you have to complete with the password. So I'll just I'll just type in the password and then later on I'll issue that password to Gabby to type in that password to access his e-learning platform to access the activity which I've already uploaded under the Maths Grade 7 fold. So I'll just type in a password. So just confirm okay it's uh, this password as a demonstration I'll just use the same password for Sarah as well so as you can see uh, for that 2021 it's just a demonstration uh, once when it's done I'll just click create user and it's already done okay then you can see there's a problem it says a uh, password must have at least one uppercase letter so we just need to re-edit that I'll just see so I'll just put a capital letter F at the beginning of fold Let's copy that uh, I think that should be okay we'll just create user and uh, they have it there's a uh, Gabriel's password already saved it's it's registered underneath the platform so Gabriel is a registered student but he's not being assigned to a specific 
a subject or grade to do so i will have to add him to to grade seven later on so we'll just add another user so we'll add um sarah so next is uh sarah first name sarah second name kumaisa email address sarah k at gmail.com and then we scroll down uh location you can say play as well uh, country we just Papua New Guinea okay done and then um, we just add a um, photo of Sarah so when she logs in she can see a profile picture so that's Sarah and then I'll just hit upload file now it's already upload I'll just have to insert the password so when Sarah logs in she will have to log in with the own password so I'll just confirm yes everything is in correct order i'll just hit the save button or create user now you just give it time for it to do its thing now once when it's created as you can see i have the students which has been created and uh, and now inside the png e-learning school system so as you can see i have gabriel here i'll just view his profile so that's gabriel here is inside this profile i can even inside the system one thing good about this is I can even send him a text text message that's one thing good about this so for myself is i'm shane chino i'm the, i am the admin of this um e-learning system i can say uh, i'll just do a quick demonstration i'll say uh hello and welcome so i'll just a short message to gabby just put a little smiley face here or maybe a thumbs up I'll just hit send maybe later on uh, when Gabby logs in this is gonna pop up in his uh, message here as you can see when I hover my mouse over to the message uh, toggle you can see that when Gabby logs in there's gonna be a notification notifying him that uh, he has an incoming message so Gabby's account is already set we'll go to uh, Miss Sarah Kumaisa so I'll just go to Sarah here Sarah and then I'll send him the me message I'll just say uh, hi Sarah um, Mr. Chino your grade 7 tutor for this semester that's all maybe smiley face same so when Sarah logs in into her account, she'll have this message sent to. So that's one thing good about the system. We can get the content, we build it. Now we can put it in this um, system where it basically runs everything from your lessons, your activities to grading everything. So I'll just log out and I'll log in as, um, uh, it's not done yet, sorry. We will have to add them to the course. So I'll just go back to the site home they already registered but they, they they're not allocated to the specific subject so i'll just go to uh, grade seven and then i'll come to i'll just scroll down to mathematics because we've uploaded content to mathematics as you can see this is the activity so i'll just click here as you can see at the top left hand corner we have the participants so all i have to do is select participants and uh, i will just have to click the enroll enroll tab there as you can see i'm just hovering my mouse there just click the enroll user and all I have to do is just um, search for the Gabby and Sarah in the search because they have been already registered. So I'll just type in Gabby. Gabby. So Gabby's there. I'll just hit enter. I want Gabby. And the next one is uh, Sarah. Uh, Sarah is there. And I'll hit um, enter. So these are the only two students that I want them to access the activities and the lessons inside the grade 7 only. So I'll just click enroll users. Once when they are enrolled, now it's it's all done so all i have to do is just let them to do the thing log in into the account and do the ac activities so for example i'll log in as uh miss as sarah Kumaisa as an example so i'll just log out as an admin and then example log in as sarah so i'll just click here and where is sarah if it's saved in here of the sarah so this is example sarah this is Sarah's account so Sarah just has to in insert her username and password make sure that everything is incorrect and then just click in login okay 
there's a problem here so we will have to make sure that the password is correct so I believe the password is capital letter fold fold so I'll just erase that so I believe that's the correct password remember user and name yes and then click login yes so there you have it Sarah is login when she logs in she will have a um, just a small introduction introducing your dashboard it's just a small mini um, uh, introduction explaining you how to use your dashboard so this is your dashboard you can just click next or you can end the tour so this just for demonstration purposes will cut the dem uh, demonstration short so as you can see I've sent Sarah Kumar a message and as you can see at the top there's a one message available and she hasn't opened up a message so she can just click that icon at the top the message icon and you can see that's from uh, myself it says uh, hi Sarah I'm Mr. Chinao your grade 7 tutor for this semester so she can in this uh, system you can always send SMS to your students you can always schedule lessons in a certain time or calendars and the system will do its thing okay let's go out okay now we have this course so this is the package that we've uploaded which we want uh, the students to access so now Sarah can click that course for example she's clicking that course now I'll just go back so as you can see like when I go back here this was the course here which we built earlier now we want this to be accessed by multiple st students at the same time so we create this as a package and we synchronized it inside this school management system so it's already there it says a uh, great time match ss1 it's then substring one just click enter now when she clicks enter just wait for it to load up and there you have it the lesson just pops up so as you can see acknowledgement firstly would like to thank the Papua New Guinea Department of Education and the Ford Flexible Open Distance Education for making this resource available this project was digitized by KLIT your e-library and e-learning specialist in PNG Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Shane Chinau. I work with KL Information Technology. We're a company specialized in building e-library and e-learning content. Uh, to make it clear, I am not a teacher by profession, but what you're going to see in this presentation or in this course module is an overview of the lesson extracted from the Education Department website from the FOD under, under uh, grade seven course mathematics you can also visit our facebook page at kale information technology or contact us through 7934-7481 or 7032-799 sorry 9730 for more information without any further ado let us proceed with our lesson These resources was extracted from the Ford website. You can visit the Ford website at www.ford.education.gov.pg. Ford Flexible Distance Education, Grade 7 Mathematics, Substrand 1, Fractions. In Fractions, we'll cover 7 lessons. Lesson 1, Comparing Fraction. Lesson 2, renaming fractions lesson three renaming mixed numbers lesson four addition of fraction and mixed numbers lesson five subtraction of fractions and mixed numbers lesson six multiplication of fractions and whole numbers lesson seven multiplication of fractions and mixed numbers so as you can see uh, this is the uh, e-learning course that was prepared earlier it has a total of uh, 23 slides which the students must complete now one thing good about the e-learning system is that students must complete these activities or lesson in order for them to progress to the next uh, stage so we'll just go through the slide and complete it and we'll end our we'll wrap it up substrand one fraction introduction you have already learned something about fraction in grade 6. In this substrand, you will revise some of the things you did 
in grade 6 and you will also learn many new things about fraction whilst our exposure to number system so far has dealt mostly with the whole numbers we also come across figures from time to time where the use of fraction cannot be avoided such terms as halves fourths or quarters are used with reference to measurements like quarter to twelve, half a kilometer three quarters full and so on consider the following question what is the three parts out of the ten equal parts An apple cake was divided equally among three children. Which part did each child get? What part of a kina is ten toya? What part of the group has been circled? The quantitatives above cannot be represented by whole numbers. We use fraction to represent them. Fractions supplement whole numbers which are sometimes inadequate for accurate measures. The computation and computation. If a unit is divided into two or more parts, each equal part is the fraction part of the whole unit, which is usually expressed in a form of fraction. Lesson 1. Comparing fraction. You learned something about fraction in your grade 6 mathematics. In this lesson, you will revise the meaning of fraction, identify and discuss the kind of fraction, differentiate between similar and dissimilar fractions, compare similar and dissimilar fractions, arrange fractions from lowest to highest or vice versa. If you're confused, you can always click the uh, the re the replay button here, as you can see, to go back to the slide to hear more about the lesson. If you're still confused, if the volume is too high, you can click the uh, the volume icon to reduce the volume or to increase the volume. Or if you want to go to full screen mode, you use the full screen option here. It's gonna view this into a full screen mode. Or if you want it back to your e-learning there is split up between your lesson and your e-learning dashboard you can reduce it back to this normal play so that's just a demonstration of how to use these uh, buttons on your e-learning course let us continue with this lesson first you will re revise the meaning of a fraction and the part of the fraction what is a fraction a fraction is a part of a portion or something. When we divide something into a part, each part is called a fraction of the whole part. For example, a mother bought a whole cake and shared it equally among her four children. The mother cut the cake into four equal parts and one part was given to each child, which was one fourth of the whole cake as shown below. Let's just continue with our lesson. Shaded part. One fourth means one of the part of the cake which was divided into four equal parts. Unshaded part equals three fourth, which means three parts of the cake which was divided into four equal parts. Each of the four equal pieces in a fraction of, a, of the cake. We say that piece is one fourth of the cake. We write one fourth like this. So one thing good about this is that you can always pause your lesson and you can always come back to do your lesson. So that's one thing good. So that same lesson Sarah is doing, Gabriel can always log in into his account and attend that same lesson. At the same time, Sarah can log out, go out, but then she can always come back to recontinue to complete her lesson. So that's just a uh, info for you to know. Let's continue. Look at the fraction again. 
1 means one of the equal pieces. 4 means the total number of equal pieces. Now look at the example. Here is the sugar cane. I cut the sugar cane into three equal parts. Here is the equal parts. Each of the equal three equal parts is a fraction of the whole piece. We say that each piece is one third of the whole piece. We write one third like this. One means one of the equal pieces. Three means the total number of equal pieces. If I had two pieces of the sugar cane, how much did I have? You had two thirds or two thirds of the sugar cane. Two means two equal of equal pieces. Three means the total number of equal pieces. Let's continue to our next lesson. Thank you. The two parts of a fraction have special name. You learned the name in grade six. The top part of the fraction is referred to as the numerator. It tells you how many the equal parts are to be taken. The bottom part of any fraction is referred to as the denominator. It tells us how many equal parts the whole is divided into. Look at the next page and see the common fractions are classified. Common fractions are classified in the following classes. One, unit fractions are fractions where the numerator is always one. Example, two, proper fractions are fractions whose numerator are less than the denominators. This fraction indicates values less than one. Examples, three, improper fractions are fractions whose numerator are greater than or equal to the denominator. These fractions indicate values equal to or greater than one. Examples. Four, fractions written in mixed forms or mixed numbers are fractions written as a sum of a whole number and a fraction. An improper fraction can also be written as a mixed number or vice versa. Examples. Five, similar fractions are two or more fraction whose denominators are the same. Examples. Six, dissimilar fractions are the two or more fractions whose numerator and denominators are different. Examples. Let's continue. In this lesson, you will also learn how to compare fractions. Comparing fraction. Below is a line segment showing points corresponding to 0 and 1. The distance is divided into 8 equal parts, as you can see on this diagram. For 0, compare the distance to 3, 8 and 5, 8, 1, 8 and 3, 8, 3, 8 and 7, 8. How do you compare fractions with the same denominators? Study the diagram below to answer the question. In the diagram above, you find three line segments which are divided into two, three, and four equal parts respectively. With zero as the starting point, compare the distance to half, one third, one quarter. Which of the following points is the nearest to zero? Furthest from zero. When two fractions have the same denominator, the fraction with the smaller numerator is less than the fraction with the greater numerator. When fraction is the same numerator, the fraction with a greater denominator is less than the fraction with a smaller denominator. Here are some examples. In each of the following pairs of fraction, which is greater? A, 8 over 13, or 7 over 13. Your answer is 8 over 13, which is greater. B, 5 over 12, or 8 over 12. Answer is 8 over 12. C, 14 over 18, or 14 over 7. 
Answer is 14 over 7. D, 75 over 10 or 75 over 20? Answer is 75 over 10. D, 7 over 9 or 5 over 9? Answer is 7 over 9. Now, go on and do the practice exercise next please proceed on so as you can see on alien uh, what we did was we turn this we turn this document here we extracted all the contents from here and we we just basically followed what the outline of the content and what was to be covered we create an engaging we create an engaging uh, alien content by building it in html as you can see then we upload it to the learning management system as you can see here and then what we did is we registered uh, uh, sarah kumaisa as a student underneath the grade seven and now she's attending this class so at every lesson when you do a lesson or an activity there's always there's always like questions that you need to attend to so the lesson already comes to an end now we are going to the next stage which is the uh, activity stage where students will have to do a couple of exercise so i will click the next button as you can see i will click the next button now and we will proceed on to do some couple of exercise now the exercise has been extracted from this i'll just scroll down here where the exercise should be, yes the exercise it's it's practical exercise one and they are um, how many lessons this lesson one two three four and five so they have it there are on five lessons inside of here now what we did is we turn this exercise practice exercise into a digital exercise which is more interactive to students to do so students can just fill in the blanks fill in the numbers and the the system yet will tell them if it's correct or incorrect so let's just go back to uh sarah kumaisa and she just continue with the exercise so she's just gonna click next and continue practice exercise number one please complete the practice exercise there are five questions so there are five questions in this practice exercise so we will have to attend do all this exercise because at the end of the exercise everything has been graded and it's going to be inside the system itself so the administrator who is in charge of the e-learning uh, management system can go in and see the progress of his students or her students so i'll just continue select the correct answer option question one this rectangle is divided into six equal parts. A. Each part of the rectangle is blank space of the whole rectangle. Please choose the correct option as shown below. So, as you've heard, uh, it says we have to choose the correct option. So, there's uh, three options here. There's uh, 1 over 6, 6 over 1, and... Uh, uh, 6 over 6 so it says that this rectangle is divided into six parts if the image is too small I can always move my mouse to the image and click the magnifying and it's big so it's how many it's just one piece and then it has how many partitions so it's like one two three four five six so six partitions so what's the question again it says the rectangle is divided into six equal parts okay yeah I know I've already counted it okay then it said um, each part of the rectangle is the whole rectangle so i believe each we are we are we are talking about maybe one so i believe the answer will be the first option one over six if, if i'm not wrong i will just give it a try to check i'll just click that and i will have to just click submit correct that's the right answer so they have it so we, sarah will have to just continue with her lesson because it's part of the activity which she has been registered as a full student so she'll just click continue to continue the next one select the correct answer option still on question one the rectangle is divided into six equal parts b five parts of the rectangle is blank of the whole rectangle please choose 
the correct answer option below okay i think that was clear it was it's very clear so uh we'll just select an option and we'll just continue with our lesson I'll, i believe that should be um with a five so i'll just click submit it's correct so we'll just continue with our lesson because um uh, the time will allow us so we just have to speed it up speed up this um demonstration so in this demonstration you will know that we are capable of building these things this e-learning uh, management things type your response question two here is a fraction five over eight a the numerator of this fraction is please type in the correct value of the new numerator in the blank space provided so as you can see it says a uh, type in the response so one thing good about um uh k light is that we can we can able to put put in values inside your question so if you have a question that involves a value then you give us the question and then we can insert a space where you can insert that uh, value so for example uh see when i type in uh, letters letters won't be allowed because it, it it only allows uh numbers of values so for example i'm just typing numbers so as you can see numbers of pops up so i'll just i'll just get this one wrong i'll just say maybe five it's correct type your response still on question two here is a fraction five over eight b the denominator of this fraction is please type in the correct denominator in the blank space provided Okay, let's continue. It's asking for the denominator eight. Let's click submit and continue. It's correct. Choose the correct answer in each drop-down list. Question three. Okay, what kind of fraction are the following? A five over eight. Please use the drop-down list to navigate to select the correct answer. Okay, one thing good about this too is um we can always add uh answers to a particular question but we can put it in a uh, drop down list form so as you can see this is just an uh, example of a of a questionnaire so for example um as you can see i'll just go back to question three here scroll down here okay there's a question three so it's asking us to put the uh, answers here so what we did was that we changed the style of the answers so you can use this list so like i'm scrolling down and i'm going to select whichever options so the out of this option there's only one correct answer so you just select it and then just click submit so we have we can always uh put your question as a drop down list style so there's a demonstration of that choose the correct answer in the drop down list still on question three what kind of fraction are the following b 5 over 2 please use the drop down list to select your correct answer choose the correct answer in the drop down list choose the correct answer in the drop down list still choose the correct answer by using select the correct answer option question 4 in each of Select the correct answer option. Se Select the Arrange the following in the correct order. Question 5. Arrange the following fraction in increasing order. The first one has been already done for you as you can see in this example. Still on question 5. Arrange the following fraction in the increasing order. B. Arrange the following in the increasing order. Still on question 5. Still on question 5. Arrange the following fraction in the increasing order. Activity D. So as you can see now the lesson comes to an end. There was uh, 5 lesson uh, extracted from this uh, fold activity exercise substrain one so we basically turn this into an e-learning course and then uh, uh, e-lesson e activity so we're done so i'll just click view result to see the status of my result so as you can see i did not pass uh, one thing good about the system it, it's 
it's going to grade you according to what you score so i'll just click review and then it's going to give me an overview of which are the correct answers and where i got wrong so i'm just going seeing through the mistakes that i've performed just click close and now just click next end of lesson this is mr channel before we end this lesson students there are attachment resources at the top top corner to access the the resources please select the resources to download the extra notes provided above thank you goodbye and see you on the next one so uh, there you have it this is a demonstration of the e-lesson and e-activities being incorporated inside the e-learning management system which manage all your participants grades and all your courses all in one package so this is sarah kumaisa attending this grade 7 mathematics fold substrate 1 fractions uh, also we added a small um video um basically we are just trying to advertise ourselves to those who are interested in uh, these products and uh, services that we are offering so we are available to build um uh, e-library course e-learning e-course e-quiz e-test e-exams we can even build like your own digital school set your own paperless uh, one thing good about this system is that you would save cost on a uh, ink and paper at the same time um uh, it will allow teachers to have uh, more more time to do other things i'll just play this video so inside the presentation we can always add videos inside for them to see. this is just a video of myself hi my name is shun chen i'm from k information technology for more content regarding e-library and e-learning products and services, you can visit our Facebook page at Kale Information Technology or you can contact us through our digital which is 7934-7481. We can build content ranging from multiple choice, short answers, quiz, electronic exam, e-courses, e-lessons, e-tests, etc. So if you need e-learning or digital courses to assist you with your teaching and learning please contact us thank you and goodbye so there you have it uh, this activity comes to an end so as you can see this activity is done so Sarah can click the exit activity so it's already been completed so now uh, as an uh, admin i just want to monitor the result for sarah so i will just log out as sarah and then i will have to log in as uh, admin i'll just log in as admin and then i will just navigate to the grade seven grade seven uh grade and now i'll just go to the mathematics section and then I will go to the participants. So basically it's gonna give me um, everything that I need to know about the participants who actually participated in this activity. So as you can see, I have the first participant was Sarah. Uh, she last accessed the course was one minute, 33 seconds ago. And now uh, uh, Mr. Gabriel Nemele uh, didn't access the lesson, so he's yet to access the activity now i want to view the results for sarah kumaisa because she already attended the lesson just have to click sarah kumaisa and then i just have to go to the section where it says uh, here reports report section so all i have to do is i can i can even view the today's log about her logs in so i'll just click today's log so basically it gives me everything that i need to know that this was the time that she logged in this was the time that she accessed the course this was the time that she completed the lesson and this was the time that she logged out so as you can see this is now i'll just go to the uh, report grades overview report so as i as you can see this is mathematics now the grade was 
she only scored 47 percent so she only scored 40 percent so as you can see one thing good about the this e-learning management system is that we we are we are able to build your e-learning courses outside and we are able to migrate them inside this this platform which you can allow your students to register you can register them yourself and you can assign specific courses or tasks to them for them to do at the same time you can put cutoff percentage you can even reward them by give them extra bonus points you can even give them uh, badges or awards in this system you can also use export to export these all these results to excel format to view it in excel form so there you have it this is just a small demonstration on what kale it is capable of doing if you're a small school and um if you don't have any teachers if you don't have any building if you don't have any materials we are able to build your digital school now digital school is basically your school but everything is being digitized meaning that all your courses are digitized all your activities are digitized your exams are digitized everything is being digitized and it doesn't involves any physical materials like paper toner ink and other all these materials which you can fill so that's the beauty of this e-learning management system it helps you to organize all your learning in one system so if you need more information on this you can always send us an email to shane.channel at gmail.com or you can visit us through our facebook page at kale information technology or you can contact us through our digital which is 7934 7481 thank you my name is shane and goodbye